So for the recipe part, we will have a water to start. He will talk uh, some slides about the general guidance. Then we will have Arani to give the example of a professional resume, which is his resume. <laughs> so greetings. Um, I've been in this business now for over 40 years, and I have the white hair to prove it. Um, I was really lucky in getting started back in the 1970s. I worked for Royal Canadian Mounted Police and their security services. That's where I sort of got my security background. And it just seems that ever since then, I've just fallen into other security jobs along the way. Uh, the thing that I love about it is that it's novel, there's something different that happens every day, it's exciting, there's lots of new things to learn, etc. So to start off with, I'd like to ask you to pretend for a moment that you are an, an athlete at the Olympics, and uh, you're in the 100 yard dash, and you want to win. And you know in the Olympics, there's only one person who gets the gold, right? So how do you get the gold at the Olympics? Do you have to be like... 50% or 100% better than all the other athletes that you're competing against? No, you have to be one one hundredth of a second faster than the, everyone else that you're chasing behind you, right? So in a similar way, what we want to do today is to talk about resumes, the job interview process, and give you some of the tips about <coughs> how you can be that just 1% better than all of the other people that you're competing with. And essentially, the bottom line here is that we want you to find your unique ability, your unique experience or skill set, whatever it is, that makes you unique in the, in the job field and lets you stand out and, and be noticed. So uh, looking at a resume, some general things to begin with. The first thing is that you need to customize your resume to each individual job that you're, you're going to uh, submit to. And the reason for that is that if you're just going to sort of send 20 resumes out to every company in town, you're going to be disappointed, right? Uh, your resume is not going to be customized for the particular job skills that they are looking for. So you may have like 10 or 15 different uh, technical abilities, but the job is probably only going to be looking for two or three of the ones that are really particular to that organization that they want you to have, right? So that's why it's important to, to customize your resume. Um, when I talk about hitting the expected SEO keywords, yeah. sorry. Yes. Sorry, I have a question. You know how the C you have ten different skills, but job list says that you need three of them. So do we not mention the other seven on the resume? You can, but it's not. It's not again expressing your unique ability. The idea is what are the basic things that a company is looking for and that I have those things. You may have some of the other things, and you, yes, you can include them if you want to, but if it makes your, your resume too bulky, right, they may not get around to even reading it. I'm sure you've heard the stories that when a job you know, uh, manager is looking at your resume, he's got 15 seconds to make a decision as to whether it's this, this, is this a, a resume I want to look at or is it not, right? And a lot of larger organizations now, they put it through a machine, first of all, that looks through for all of the d different uh, keywords they're looking for. So maybe on their job des description, they said, you know, it's preferred if you have uh, a CISSP certification, right? Well, maybe you don't have a CISSP certification yet. That takes like five years to get. But what you can say on your resume is, you know, I am studying and reading uh, the, the information to gain my CISSP certification. So that buzzword, that keyword is in there, so the human resources department is going to say, oh, okay, pass through that gate, right? You want to pass through as many gates as you can so that your resume gets into the hands of the actual manager who's doing the hiring process. So that's really important. Obviously, you want to express your you know, best practices, uh, the things that make you ex excel, whether it was a particular course that you took at college, a uh, particular kind of uh, training that you're skilled in, particular kind of tools that you've used, uh, these are the sorts of things that they also want to see. And that tells them that you're, you're familiar with and you're comfortable with using a lot of the information security tools that we use in business. Um, if you can find the time to squeeze in reading about the ISO and uh, NIST and CIS standards, this goes a long way to letting the job manager know that Ah, uh, this is a person who knows the foundation work that everything else is built on. So again, you don't have to know them inside and out. 
but if you've read them, if you've taken a bit of time to actually go through them, uh, and you can put that on your resume then to say, yes, I have read through these and I do have a basic understanding of them, again, that helps you pass through the filters and get your resume into the hands of the, the person who's actually doing the hiring. Transferable skills. Um, this is primarily focused at people who maybe have been out of the job market for a number of years. And oftentimes people say, well, you know, I don't have that CISSP. I don't have a lot of experience using these tools and things like that. Uh, maybe I've taken time out from school to go and raise a family, right? So I'm a, I've been sitting at home for the last four years uh, looking after my children. Um, but there are transferable skills. Uh, a lot of the women that I speak to looking at for jobs are wonderful multitaskers, right? They know how to do 10 things at once, and a lot better than what the men do. So if we're looking for someone who's good at doing multitasking, I'd much rather interview a woman than I would a man. Uh, and that follows for a lot of other things. If you think that you have a transferable skill that may not necessarily apply to this particular job, but is transferable, like for example, maybe you've done volunteer work in a hospital, right? And you've been helping a department of, of physiology you know, sign people up and take them down the hallway to introduce them to the doctors or whatever else. You have that sort of organizational administrative skills, right? You don't have to tell people that you were a volunteer there and you didn't get paid any money. All you say is, I have this administrative and uh, organizational skill that's transferable to what you need in your company. Um, one of the things that we're always looking for is people who are team players. Can't emphasize that enough. We want people who get along with other people and can be part of the team. How do you do that? Often that isn't something that fits on your resume, so we suggest you put it in your cover letter. Your cover letter is your opportunity to say a little bit more about yourself. It's more personal, and it gives them a, t a chance to see who you are as a person. Like, what is your unique ability or thing that makes you shine in, in the marketplace? And that might be things that you do totally outside of what you do with your schoolwork, right? Again, could be that uh, you know, you're, you help organize the local food bank. You work in the lo as a volunteer in the local hospital, things of that sort. Uh, anything of that sort that you do, which is transferable skills, shows that you have an ability to be flexible and are able to organize things and lead things, that's wonderful to see on a person's cover letter. So enthusiasm and curiosity and confidence, that cover letter is all about you. So take the opportunity to, to do a cover letter it's amazing that so many, a lot of people, when we offer them the opportunity to submit a cover letter along with the resume, they don't do it. They just send the resume in. So they lose that opportunity to say more about themselves. Uh, let some of your friends read your resume, please. Let several of your friends read your resume because you'll be amazed how many typos, uh, how many grammar errors, spelling mistakes, things there are on people's resumes. And unfortunately, that looks really bad. It looks like, oh, this person does not pay attention to detail. They don't care enough to, again, put their best foot forward here. So please take as much time as you can to make your resume really shine and polish it as much as you possibly can. Uh, the other thing around resumes is please submit them in a PDF format, not as a Microsoft Word document, because the, the hiring manager and the HR people who pull your, your resume up on the screen look at it, if it's in Microsoft Word, and they don't have the fonts that you've used in your document, or their normal formatting template that's not the same as what you used, everything looks like chaos. And again, that doesn't look very attractive. So. Let's look at some different resumes. Here's mine, for example. Now, um, first, first two pages. You can see that I've organized my resume, so I've got a little uh, summary section at the very top just this sort of really important stuff around who I am, where I live, what my phone number is, things of that sort that I think are important. A uh, section on my education, certifications, qualifications, and that's the things like, uh, you know, that I have a CISSP and a CCSP, that I have a master's degree and things of that sort. A uh, section on achievements. Oops, sorry. A section on achievements here. 
which is basically me being proud of all the really important and interesting things that I've done over the years. That I was in charge of a multi-million dollar project. <coughs> I managed 50 people in a different data center. That I uh, was in South Africa in 1994 and, and did the, re the work for uh, the, the South African election. Things of that sort that you're really proud of that shows your capabilities. Another section on technical skills uh, up here. And that's where you put in all the stuff on you know, the tools that you've used and how smart you are and things like that. And then another section which just goes into your various professional and technical highlights of what your jobs are for the last few years. Now, a few years ago I had a resume that was 15 pages long. And of course, who's ever going to read a 15 page resume? But because I had so many jobs over the years, I had so many pages to describe, you know, here's what this job is and what that company did and what I did when I was there. And, you know, who's interested in reading all that? Nobody. So, uh, Headhunter, though I was talking with, said, hey, you know, you've got to compress that down into something that the people in the HR department and the hiring manager are actually going to be able to wade the way through. So, I got it down to three pages. This is two or three pages. Uh, I, I encourage everyone to do one or two pages if you can, uh, which is easier for people to get through. What's wrong with my, my resume? Pretty dense, right? Hard to go through, but it does hit all the all the SEO you know search criteria buttons, right? Any possible thing that you can think of that would be a keyword to search on in information security, you know, it's in there somewhere. Let's look at another resume. And this is for Marissa Mayer, who is the uh, president and CEO of Yahoo. Now her resume looks totally different than mine does, right? It's very uh, open. Beautiful spacing, nice use of icons. Uh, it gives you a really interesting flow of the important things about her experience, her life philosophy, the things she's most proud of and the work that she's done. This is just the top of the page. Here's the bottom of the page. Again, some more of her jobs. What she does in a day in, in, in her, her work life, which is a really kind of cool idea. Uh, lots of little, nice icons. Uh, her language skills, her education. All the important things that you need to know about this person is there on that one piece of paper and beautifully formatted. So that's a cool one. Uh, here's one of the people who actually works at Defenda. I blocked off a couple of sections just to sort of anonymize it and scrub it a little bit. Again, very nice use of white space. A, a little paragraph profile of this person at the top saying basically who I am and what I've done, where I'm from. Uh, education that he wants to emphasize, and then a list of experience in the various companies he's worked for. Again, nicely formatted. Uh, some of the big projects that he's worked on in the past that he thinks are important and he wants to emphasize, and what he learned, what he did, and his certifications at the bottom. Now, as you can see, we've gone through three resumes here so far, things can be mixed up. They don't have to be in a particular order, right? Often you'll see a bit of identifying information at the top, a little profile, but all the rest of it is kind of up to you, depending on what you want it to look like and the things that you want to emphasize, right? So again, putting your best foot forward, move those things around on the page so that you have the things that you think are your unique ability and your most important skills. Put those up at the top, put the other things down near the bottom. A little bit on certifications. You'll find that most organizations love certifications, right? We wish that everyone had a CISSP or something to do with Cisco or a Microsoft certification, whatever else. And there are hundreds of them now, right? So what do you pick and choose? Well, you probably are thinking that, well, my interest in uh, information security goes in a particular direction. Maybe it's to do with network security. Maybe it's to do with Microsoft things. Maybe it's to do more things like I would like to be a consultant in the future. In any case, depending on where you start from, uh, the beginner ones over here on the left, intermediate, advanced, experts, and there are dozens of them depending on which, which stream you want to go through. Uh, don't worry about copying all this down. I've, I've told Brian I'm going to give him all these slides and he can publish them for you guys to look at later. So you want to get a copy of these and look at the resumes in more detail, look at the certifications in more detail. Don't worry about that. They'll be available to you. Relevant certifications. Again, this is like, what do you think you're going to be doing in the future? Are you more of a Microsoft-y person who wants to do uh, work in that area? 
Uh, are you a person who's really interested in cloud security? Um, the CISSP, this one, is kind of the gold standard these days. And lots of organizations love to see a CISSP certification, but it is one that is kind of expensive and it will take you five years to get through it to get the relevant experience to go with it when you write the exam. One I'd like to just draw your attention to is a brand new one down here called the PCCSA. And that was by Palo Alto Networks. Anybody here know who Palo Alto is, right? Big firewalls, enterprise type equipment. Um, well, they've been noticing as well that it's really difficult to find people who have the right skill sets in general organizational things to do with information security, as well as the really detailed network security things around managing firewalls. So they've set up their own certification process, and it is free. So you can actually download the study materials, do, register for it, do some reading, uh, write the exam, and presto, you've got a PCCSA certification to put on your resume. Okay? Uh, I would say that it is not totally easy. There's about three different sections to it. The first two, I will bet that you've covered most of that material already in your, in your uh, semesters here at the college. The third one, which is very much more focused on network security and Palo Alto firewalls, obviously they have a vested interest in finding people and educating people in their products. Probably will take you more time to go through, but it's all good stuff, right? So here's a way to get a free certification. Um, that's kind of the end of the resume part of what I was going to talk to. If I have another minute, I can talk a little bit more about the actual process that we usually go through. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to get your resume into the hands of this guy down here, the hiring manager, right? But typically what happens is you send in your resume the standard way and it goes down into the HR department here. The HR department's job is to make sure your resume never gets to the hiring manager, right? They're there to weed you all out. They're there to say, huh? Eh, doesn't have a CISSP. Huh? Eh, doesn't have 25 years of experience. Huh? Eh, doesn't have this. Doesn't have that. Not going to get there. This poor guy who's the hiring manager, right? He doesn't have a lot of time to hire people. It's like the last thing on his list of things to do every day. So he's only going to get a couple of resumes sent down to him by the HR department. Your job is to, again, get through that sieve in the HR department by putting as many keywords as you can in your resume, right, so that it checks all the right boxes that was in the original job description, so that it gets forwarded on to him. He's only going to look at, maybe, if he's lucky, a half a dozen resumes that come in for a job that might have had, who knows, hundreds of applicants, right? The other thing you can do is if you're really clever, is use this over here and put your resume directly into his hands. And the way you do that is by avoiding the HR department. And the way you do that is find out the name of this person, whoever the hiring manager is. That's not going to be an easy job, but it is possible. Here's some things you should do. First of all, you're going to go to the company website. You're going to look through there. Often they have profiles for some of the the department managers and the directors of the company. Note down all those people's names. Do a Google search for the company. Find out everything there is on that company. This is your background research you're going to do that helps you to customize your resume. Look for LinkedIn connections for anybody who works in that company. And you'll be really, really surprised at how often a, a profile will pop up for someone who is a manager of information security. Voila, you got it, right? You got the person's name. Now you know who to direct it to when you send your resume into the company. You can also send it to the HR department going through the regular channels, but here's a way to get it into the hands of the person who's actually making the decision on who to hire. Here's the poor hiring manager, right? He's underwater. He's got five million things to do every day and no time to look at resumes to do interviews and everything else. So here's some things you can do to make his job easier when you get to the actual point of doing the resume, or sorry, the job interview with him. You've got your interview into his hands. He's called you up and said, wow, fantastic. I'd really like you to come in for an interview. Don't be on time. Be early, okay? Be prepared. 
there may not just be him that you're being interviewed by. There may be a team of other people that are with him to ask more technical questions or whatever. So bring some extra resumes you can hand out to them. Breathe deeply. Be calm. Observe. Feel. Look. Don't get all hyped up. Your gut intuition will tell you an awful lot about what's going on during the interview. It'll help you find out, is this the company I really want to work for? Is this the boss I really want to have as a manager for the next five years? Or is this going to be a sweatshop that's going to beat me into the ground and I don't really want this job, right? So it's okay to decide after a job interview, I don't really want to work here, okay? There's no point in you taking a job that you hate. Okay? But on the other hand, this is your time to shine. So, what you do want to do is be able to answer behavioral questions. So rather than them just saying, do you know how to run Splunk? Do you know how to run Nessus and Rapid7? They may ask you questions like, you know, um, what was your favorite uh, course that you took at college? You probably had some big project you were working on there. and Probably something went wrong. You, know, you couldn't find the resources you needed. Uh, one of the other team players you're working with wasn't pulling their weight and didn't get their work done on time, X, Y, Z, right? How did you affect that project to get it back on track and resolve that problem? What did you have to do? Walk me through that, will you please? And that gives them a chance to see how do you behave in a critical, you know, high pressure environment where you're trying to get something done <coughs> and you're out, of your, you're out of your league, you're out of your comfort zone, right? So be prepared for answering behavioral questions. Uh, I won't go through all of these. Again, demonstrate your unique ability. I want you to write down the specific questions you're going to ask them at the end of, the, uh, the end of your interview because you're going to forget. After you've been in a job interview for an hour, your mind is going to be totally blank. So when they get to the point where are saying, so have you got any questions for us? Right? So write them down so you can say, well, yes, you know, we spoke earlier about X, Y, Z. Can you tell me more about that? You should avoid any getting dragged into any discussions about money and benefits during the actual job interview. Leave that to the very, very end. And the reason for that is uh, talking about money and benefits is a negotiating process. It is not an interview process, okay? It is something that is very important that you play poker on. You keep your cards close to your chest and you not let them know what it is that you want or need as far as money goes. So if they try to force you into that, there are ways to, and we'll talk about this probably during the, the interview sessions, uh, there are ways to handle that, right? My one point here is that it's always easier to go down than it is to come up. If you undervalue yourself as a person, and what you want is a salary, and say, oh, I'll, say, I'll take whatever you want. You know, can I please have another, another bowl of porridge, sir? Right? You're going to only get the minimum they're going to allow. If you ask for more than what you want, you can always go down. You can always negotiate yourself down. They'll say, well, that's too much money. Say, okay, well, you tell me what the range is then for what it is you're willing to pay us. Right? So it's a negotiating process. It has nothing to do with the job interview. Uh, your final question at the end of your interview should always be, what's our next step to move forward in the hiring process? That's what you have to ask them if you want to go to the next step in the hiring process. All right? That tells them you're enthusiastic, you're interested, you're willing to take the next step. They're not going to have to prompt you. They know that you're interested. It also gets them on the spot for actually letting you know what the interview process is and the next step and how soon they're going to get back to you. Uh, sending a follow-up thank you letter. This is kind of variable. I've heard from some hiring managers who have said, don't bother, I don't read them, I throw them in the trash bin, who cares? I've also had an HR representative call me up on the phone one day and said, I just wanted to call you and say thanks so much for that, that thank you letter you sent it to me. She said, I've worked here for five years. No one has ever sent me a thank you letter. Hey, I'm your golden boy today, right? I stand out. Nobody else did that, right? That gives me the extra 1%. So again, back to our Olympic athletes thing, 
you don't have to be 500% better than everyone else. You just have to be one one hundredth of a second, you know, one percent better than everyone else. And the way you do that is by showing your unique abilities, both in your resume and the way you present yourself in your interview. All right. Thank you.